So, welcome everyone to uh, the Comp Plan Implementation Committee meeting of December 11th, 2023. I'm hoping that a couple more folks will be joining us uh, virtually. Um, I think Rick is just coming in and Andy is here, but he needs to leave a little early. Um, and we'll see, I haven't heard anything from Angela. We'll see if she's able to come. Um, okay, we always start off with um, an agenda review, since I've already done a welcome. Um, and is there anything that we, that anyone sees to add to this agenda? I think we're adding the, uh, the road trip. Yes, and I guess what we could do is add that um, as the well. I'd like to add that when um, Andy is still here. Right. So, five fifteen hard stop. Is that right? So we're, we're going to put this the the that the trip to the downs at the first bullet under item four recode. So we can talk about that there and Andy will still be with us and I think we're gonna we'll gain a little time there great and the only thing I have to adjust is under that same item recode update the select board update is not going to be on January 18th it's going to be on December 21st oh. so I've already started drafting so if I ever get a little discombobulated in this meeting. My head is not on this agenda. It's in the update. <laughs> and what I'm going to be doing is sending that update draft to the committee prior to by the end of day tomorrow so that because it needs to be turned in on Wednesday. Folks will have 24 hours to, to look at it. Um, and, and hopefully it will only be a couple pages. So look for that okay so those two items um downs okay i don't think we have any members of the public so we will nix that and a and move into administrative items um the minutes of the november 13th meeting were distributed Thank you, Robin. Um, is there any sort of comment, correction, whatever? Speak up. Hearing none, I will assume that the minutes of November 13th are approved as sent. Just give me a little nod. I am. Margaret raised her hand here. Not I'm not sure. Sorry. Is that, a, is that Margaret? I needed to promote her, so oh, maybe that's all she Maybe that's all I need. Glad Margaret is with us. Okay. Margaret, welcome. We um we just approved the minutes of November 13th. Um and unless there's anything to be added or changed, good. Nod. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, the only um, item, and it's I think it's a quickie, is our meeting, our workshop meeting this month falls on the 19th. Um, I, unfortunately, because I've started drafting the um, update to the select board, I've blown out any sockets I could use for this discussion right now. So I'm going to rely on my fellow committee members, if there are any ideas about how we should use that meeting, um, I'm all for holding it. And if people need to attend by um, remote, you know, rather than in the conference room upstairs, my thinking is to simply, you know, have a look at the calendar ahead. Um, that was going to be my suggestion. Let's just look at our our really, schedule going forward. Look at brilliant minds. Um, so I and and if anything comes up between now and then, we could use that. But are people okay about if if your calendar 
should have a workshop on it every Thursday, every every third Tuesday, um, four to five, one hour. If folks can come, I think we should hold it. Any objections? So it's a third, third Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, four to five. A meet in the upstairs conference room. Right now, there are a lot of meetings in that room for budget purposes. So we might get bounced, which would be, I guess, down here is the only place to be bounced to, right? But okay, all right. So that's going to happen. Calendar and work plan review. Okay, right into recode update. Um, I'll start off and allow other minds to contribute who went on the trip. Um, Margaret was able to go. She met us there. We went to Scarborough Downs. We've been talking about it for a few months. And thank you, Andy Sturgeon, for um, you know encouraging it and providing others of us with transportation. Um, and Julie worked things out with the folks down there, the planning director, so that we met with the former planning director of Scarborough and the lead person on the development team and um, another developer. And very exciting things are, are going on. So Julie and Sky and myself and Pete went and Andy driving. And then Margaret met us there. So we, you know, the committee was well, well represented. And um, it was fascinating. We, we spent well over an hour, an hour and a half in this conference room looking at plans and photos. And um, then we had a tour um, and a little bit of a tour before. And then, bless him, Pete summarized our um, our experience um, and and I think you know it was wonderful to sort of capture that. So what you're looking at on the screen now, Julie sharing her screen, is some photos of some of the housing. And the biggest, you know, other folks who went, please chime in. But the biggest takeaway that I had, um, you know, I had three. The biggest one was just. I remember hearing somebody on TDR ask the question, if we talked about housing diversity, housing diversity is in our comp plan. It's not affordable housing, it's housing diversity. It was an example of housing diversity. What can you do? What are the different types of housing? Sizes, price points, um, living styles, you know, all kinds of things. Somebody said, well, tell, tell me more about housing diversity. And I said, I am not a housing expert, but Scarborough Downs gives you that experience. Um, so I'll leave it to others to chime in on, on that. And um, again, thanks, Andy, for making sure that we got that experience at this point in our... If you want to chime in first, you go for it. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, first of all, I, you know, I... It was even more than I had expected, I guess. And I was most almost shocked that Rocco Risbera, who was the president of the Downs, spent an hour and a half with us. I did not expect that. I expected Dan Bacon to be there because, uh, Julie, you had reached out to Dan, but I didn't expect Rocco to be there. And his son, who was the head of um, a portion of the development. And I really didn't expect him to be so forthcoming on a lot of issues. Number one, I don't know if you remember, he he jumped right out and said how much he paid for it. I mean, which is kind of unusual for a developer to admit that, although it was a tremendous deal when you when you look at, you know, you look at that 525 acres and you say how much of that really is wetland and how much is it use, usable. And I think he ended up, correct me if I'm wrong, but somewhere around 450 acres of usable and 75 acres of wetlands. Yeah. Which was which was just you know, I just it just shocked me. Um, so when you look at price per acre of developable land, that's going to be the price of the century. What he paid for it, um, but just to hear some of his stories, um, how he struggled through different parts of the development and some yet to come, 
uh, was interesting because most developers do struggle some, but he seemed to have that, I don't know, characteristic about him where he was willing to plow through somehow and find a solution. And I think that's probably what's making the down so successful is the fact that Rocco is, has got that charisma and that ability to, to work with people well. And Dan Bacon, you know, Dan, Dan, for people don't realize, he was the plan of four Scarborough and then went to a private engineering company and then went to uh, the, the Rosberra's construction or Rosberra Brothers company, the Downs, where he works full time. So he's got so much history in Scarborough. It's just amazing. Um, Pete, thank you for your notes. I think you captured everything but one thing. And, and, and it's almost like the elephant in the room because I didn't hear it message mentioned unless I missed it, Pete. We asked uh, Dan Bacon about uh, form-based housing and how he looked at, at codes as they developed the downs. And, and he, wasn't, uh, he, he wasn't a fan or not a fan of, of form-based housing. He said for, for this diversity of development to meet the criteria that they had and the criteria that town had, they had to come up with a hybrid. So it, was a, it wasn't all form-based, and, and neither are we. We're taking form-based on a certain part of the town. But I, I do like the fact that there was some flexibility. Now, I don't think that flexibility was born in the initial code. So I think they've worked through it, and that's been part of their struggle. And I can't remember who said it at the meeting, but someone said about can't, if we use master planning, won't we have that flexibility? I, I hope so. Because, I mean, we really don't know what's going to be in front of us four, five, six, seven years from now when, when parts of the of Topson will be developed. But as long as there's some flexibility built in, and for Larry's information, they relied a lot on the planning board to make decisions about whether something was allowed and not allowed. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, Susan or Julie or anybody that was there, but that's kind of the way I looked at it. Overall, I was just shocked um, at how responsible of development it was. I would encourage anybody to get out and see it at, at any time. The walkability is an amazing attribute to that 525 acres. So I'll shut up for a few minutes. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that, Andy. Um, the, the, that Because I did ask the question about form-based code and and right away he said, um, you know, it was a hybrid. Um, and the thing that they showed us on the map was they started off at one end of the, the geographic area um, with housing. They needed a win and they got that win. They got a great buy-in with some affordable housing, some senior housing, lots of housing. That's because they started on that end, because, the route one end, because of utilities. They needed to start on, because it was a practical. The other end, which I don't, is the pain road, that's the light industrial area. That was number two. They're, they're working on that. The area that's mapped out that I'm sure is a hybrid of form-based code is the center, which is the town center. And that's mixed use. That's where form-based code does its magic. When you have a mixed use, when you're purely residential, it may not be work so well. I don't know. I would love to have Leslie right here to say, yes, you can. But that's my understanding is that it works best when you have a mixed use buildings area and, and a walkable center. So I think that's where they're going. But it was, so anyway, that's, go for it. <laughs> the, uh, uh, I asked a question about retirement community. Yeah. And there is a retirement community directly in the plans um, uh, covering uh, independent assisted living and memory care, about one third uh, each, I forget, 120 units total or something like that. So I was happy to hear about that because um, obviously, and, and it, it ties in with the fact that it was mentioned that many of the people who are purchasing the homes you know, were uh, older folks uh, whose children had left the nest. Uh, although there, there, there were families also in there, but the majority, one and two bedrooms, seemed to be the, the most common configuration. Um, as we saw when we drove around, we could see that there were, like, like we're looking at right now, 
many standalone uh, homes, but they're also multi-unit uh, homes, three-story multi-units. Um, and I noticed on on many of the uh, many of the individual homes, uh, most of them had garages. Some of the garages were slightly recessed and visible from the front. Others had an access road like this one that we're looking at here, mm -hmm. an access road to get to the garages. Other and I think the, the multi-story units had a whole row of garages all kind of connected together. Uh, which is understandable. I guess that's to save to save uh, space. Um, so uh, form based code again, relative to the houses that have been built, uh, I I think I'd call it a hybrid uh, because the uh, some of them, as I mentioned, had the garages in the front without any recessing. Yep. Yep. Others had a slight recessing, which is a little bit better than not. And then um, uh, others, uh, the multi-stories had the units uh, uh, separated from the main building itself. So that's kind of- Yeah, a, Pete, uh, just to piggyback on Pete, um, he did mention that they've got 500 units already on built on site to give it, uh, the people that weren't there a perspective. And they expect to have 2000 when it's, all built out. So they still got another 1,500 units to build. But I did also hear and think that there probably wouldn't be any more single family homes. It just takes up too much area. Although they have quite a few, like you pointed out there now in this first 500, I don't think yeah. they anticipate too many more single family. That was my take. Yeah. yeah. Um, lost my thought there for a minute. But uh, and also uh, the what they call the commercial area, or they call the innovation <laughs> innovation area, with uh, businesses such as uh, Costco, uh, and uh, those are impressive, and those are still some of the roads are still being put in as we as we drove through. But uh, I think the way they, the way they went about it, uh, doing the houses first. And they were they were gobbled up right away quickly. Yeah. Uh, and and it sounds like they didn't do such a bad job with the commercial either. And uh, of course now they're focusing on the town center. So I, I think I think that uh, level of priority and what they what they tackled first, second, third, I think just kind of fits with their uh, overall plan. Yeah, and I I think I think that total number too. When I said 2,000, that included any residential that will be in the downtown center. Um, yep. Yep. That included all residential. And he also did say 2 million retail. And that includes the light industrial part. And they've got about a million in place now. So they've got another million of, of retail. And a school, I think, along with the downtown. Yeah, the school is sort of a long-term proposition since... It didn't pass muster the first time around. Um, another thing that I took notes on um, was that they have donated uh, 25 acres to the local land trust. Um, there's an area on one side that sort of exceed, you know, was outside the boundaries of the downs proper that they actually own, but they have donated that to the land trust. And one of the things that Sky helped us to appreciate, she asked some questions about trails. Oh. And we talked about, um, you know, are there trails through some of the green space? And there are, but they're also mindful of how they're creating sidewalks so that people who want, you know, to have a walking experience can have a, have a choice of loops to walk on. Um, so they're going to actually have 25 miles of trails and sidewalks mm -hmm. within the downs um, when they're done. Um, and any other folks want to chime in before I keep yakking? Margaret, I'm so glad <laughs> you were there for most of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I super appreciated the opportunity to get this perspective from the developer side. Um, 
on a project as big as this and the fact that they were willing to spend so much time with us, that was really lovely. Um, and the fact that they had so much housing diversity, I thought that was really notable and interesting. Um, I was really excited to see uh, sort of the fact that it's like a little mini town, um, <laughs> like that they have different districts uh, all connected to one another. And I wish that I had been there to see the tour and see really what it feels like to be in that space and like, you know, commute from the housing area to the light industrial area. Um, but I, and then I am really wanting to see, I think they, they haven't even started constructing the town center yet. Um, that, that to me seemed like the most applicable to our Crooker site. Um, and that was, that's, I think that to me was the most exciting concept that I saw, um, and I'd just be, I'm like really interested to see how that will come together. Um, but then the like, the housing type, the the character of being in the space, I, I just wish I was there for the tour because driving through, it didn't really feel like a place that I would want to have a, that I would want to live um, just because of how dense it felt and um, the lack of trees there was it was very like exposed yeah. yeah and I didn't I also didn't notice like I'm very um interested in like communal places to be in nature which the trails are great um but I think gardening is like really important as well and I don't know if there's you know ways for people to engage on that like person to person level uh in in nature or like have their own space so yeah, I'd love to see what, like walk through the the housing area. Um, and then also- see, I, I, Margaret, did you see some of those really small houses? No, I, I saw think, a picture. Yeah, and there were several, I mean, I don't know how many there were of them, but my guess is that they were probably around 500 square feet, 550 square feet. It looked like each of them had a loft and then a main floor. And all of them had a little sort of uh, porch, if you want to call it that, right on the sort of ground level. Um, just great looking little structures. Um, so that was sort of at one end of the place. Mm. Yeah. And there were trees they had planted, but those are going to take years. I think they must have clear cut the, or maybe the trees had been long cut down in certain areas. I, who knows? But yeah, that, that will take some time. <laughs> Trees are slow. <laughs> yeah, I'm also, I mean, still learning about like, you know, how much how much it costs to develop, to create housing. 10% um, affordable sounds low to me. I, I don't know if like, I have no concept of if that is um, typical, um, but it sounds like the cost of building is going up. But I just... Yeah, I wonder if it's if it's affordable enough for the folks who are like working in those other areas to be able to afford living in that space. So, yeah, yeah, good is it, question. Yeah, good case study though. I'm glad that we had the opportunity to check it out. Yeah, Andy. Yeah, just to Margaret, just a little bit of feedback on the affordable housing it's just it's such a struggle right now we're trying to make it happen on so many projects um it's just the cost drives it up it just drives drives it up and the incomes are nowhere near today um what they used to be relative to affordability of a home it's just affordability of a home is just so far out of reach today it's something that i i just think the federal government's going to have to subsidize somehow housing for I mean, you can have a job and make sixty or eighty thousand dollars a year and not be able to afford a house. That's a sad. Yeah. When you look at it, that's a sad, sad thing. Yeah. Um, there are a couple projects out of Brunswick Landing. I I can't remember that are mm -hmm. doing. They've got some subsidy and they're doing a great job. Um, they might be an interesting study, and I'll try to get some information on those. Julie, you don't have any um, photos of the 
center. I don't. You know what I was going to do? Um, I was going to pull up the website. I, I had it up before. And, and you, you saw some of the. Yeah, oh, here it is. The downs. And while, this, while Julie so, is locating that, I just wanted to mention three different topics that got brought up with the developer and Dan Bacon. Um, one of them was transportation. There is transportation within the Downs. They're linking with um, the Bitterford Saco network. And so they're, they're, they're already planning for that. They're, they're identifying stops um, on the route. Um, another question that we raised was gas stations. <laughs> they're only going to be on the outside rim. Um, and I think it's in the light industrial area. Um, I think that's what my note said, um, where they already are along the Payne Road. So they're providing for that, but they're very um, circumscribed in the area where they can be. And the other was, wait for it, drive throughs <laughs> <laughs> Now, someone check me on what the thing was with drive throughs but my understanding was coffee shops, coffee houses with a drive through is it for drive throughs in terms of what is allowed. I don't know if there's a provision for waivers and conditional use for anything else, but they are, they're not. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. For I think you're right. Weren't allowed. The drive through drive throughs for banks were allowed we're allowed okay banks or restaurants restaurants right. are not right so um and, and, go ahead you, you mentioned gas and and i think the, they said the only gas is the one that's with costco that's out there there's no other room for gas i think that is the only gas station that's going to be in there um okay. i don't want to i don't want to lose that upper right picture you've got right there on the screen right now mm -hmm. for a later discussion because that ties in with our some of our vision where some of the houses on the right are up to the road, but you do have some, you look how those buildings are on the left. And this is the entrance into their downtown from Hagus Parkway. Just mm -hmm. as an example, I just want to make sure we point that out at some point. And one of the things that, that did come up in the discussion is green space. And one of the things um, we talked about is, you know, they've done a lot of the, the focus has been on place making. Um, that is something that form based code is used for. Um, they've incorporated a significant amount of green space as a way to um, sort of address quality of the place and compensate for the density of development. So that and where the green space was most visible was in that town center area. Um, you know, when we were sort of looking at the, the whole 24, 525 acres with, you know, various kinds of housing on, on one end and the light industrial on the other and the Hagus Parkway photographs that Andy referred to on the southern piece, the center part, which is not yet developed and where there's the biggest challenge um, to get the utilities in, that's the, the town center is where there was a significant amount of green space um, in there with, you know, with what they're hoping to have is restaurants, some office space, housing, you know, it's, um, it's very much in line with, I think, what we're envis envisaging is possible for the quicker site. Um, so anything, these are great. Yeah, I got a photos. question for you, Susan. Yeah. So was there any, you know, direct takeaways of things that either validated what we're doing with recode things that we would want to incorporate that we haven't already or rethink that we have? You always on... ask the good questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll leave it to 
folks who came on the tour and listened and, and yeah, go ahead, Andy. Jump in. Now, the only thing, Rick, that I, I think was a great takeaway was some flexibility. Yeah. Um, not be so rigid, but still, that flexibility was governed by the planning board too. It wasn't something that it wasn't something that someone could just push through. It was a it was a hard study on whether that flexibility should be allowed. And I guess, um, I, I mean, we mentioned the crooker, and almost all of the stuff is a vision of the crooker. There's just a couple things that I can see of possibilities that might need that flexibility, and one might be similar to the entrance up there, and and um, uh, the upper right hand corner, but that wouldn't be the same entrance into the crooker either. Cause that's, you know, you got 196 there, but I guess just the flexibility um, that might look more like the entrance coming off 201 into crooker, for example, right. where you, that's what I'm you know, but, but at the same time, if you go strict form base without flexibility, I've got to put that building on the left right up to the road and put all the parking in behind and just, I just can see some developers giving us a hard time. So. But as Leslie has reminded us, we're already into a hybrid. We are not strict form based as it is. So, and we're building in, we're, we're dealing with a draft where a good yep. amount of um, feedback has been taken with revisions planned. So I think we're well into the flexibility area. Um, I do too. And, and to further answer Rick's question, I think a lot of what we're doing is validated. And I think Pete will okay. back me up on that as well as Susan and Margaret and Julie. One of the things that hasn't been brought up yet, which um, I responded to Pete's notes with, you know, one of the things we learned is that the Scarborough comprehensive plan that from which this emerged, from which the downs emerged was approved and completed in 2006. So the rezoning effort, the recoding effort that they went through was completed in 2013. So it took seven years for that to work itself through. Um, even though it's a larger um, acreage than ours in, in a sense, it's, it's, I think our effort, our project is probably comparable um, when you look at what we've bitten off that we're chewing on now. <laughs> That's what you say, we're right on schedule. I think we are. <laughs> I think we are, so that it's an odd kind of um, validation. So I appreciate your, your question, Rick. The other thing is, even though I think on the one hand, we there's a call for and a recognition that flexibility is needed. On the other side was, you know, when we talked to them about drive-throughs, gas stations, and mm -hmm. transportation, all of those things were addressed in a very clear way in terms of what is appropriate for this area, for this project, for this walkable town center. They're even, they have an area in the town center where the roadway is gonna be raised so that people can walk from one side of the street to the other without stepping down off a curb. Um, you know, there's there's a, a, a great effort to create um, an innovative, um, walkable town center. So did you like that, Andy? <laughs> yeah, I did. And, and it reminds me of a comment that Rocco made. And, and one we're going to face, too, is yeah. by raising that center, it really gives the driver of a vehicle caution. So they yeah. slow down and, and it's it's not street lights. It's like a piazza that cars can pass through. But the right. biggest pushback they got in that he kept shaking his head at was the public uh -huh. works said, no, yeah. you can't do it because we're not going to be able to plow it as efficiently as we can any other way. So the, he said, be prepared because you're going to get a lot of pushback from public works from an efficiency standpoint, the, you know, the dollar tied to their budget as opposed to, you know, what's right for the for this walkable com com community. So if you want to have that walkability, you've got to give up some um, public maintenance efficiencies in my in my mind and try to figure out a solution. And, and Rocco was pretty upfront about that, which is that's why I chuckled. It was just so such a um, almost uh, predictable argument. And emergency services, he also mentioned. And he talked about how they want to get, be able to get a fire truck around the back of the building. And he suggested that EMS in in Scarborough go and look at some buildings in Portland. 
<laughs> anyway, there's always a compromise available. Um, I just wanted to. Oh, go for it. I wanted to add, I just don't, I wasn't clear if that raised Piazza thing came out of, I don't think it came, I don't think it was connected to the code. It was like a design element that they yeah. added to create character, yeah. but it wasn't something that was like created. I, I okay. Yeah, I okay. That. And it was very creative. I think it was a great idea. I think it's something that I don't know if I'd put it in code right now, but I'd certainly, I, I know that we're certainly going to bring it up if we ever get to the point where we'll be presenting something on Crooker. That's that's a great, I just think it's a great idea. Yeah. yeah I, I look at it as a one big speed bump. Because in downtown Brunswick, you have these little speed bumps which slow down the traffic significantly. So, I mean, it definitely ties into our comprehensive plan for safety uh, as far as walkability, but also to slow the traffic down. That was very it's something you'll see in, you see in Europe a lot too. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Dan Bacon did mention that speed is a big problem within the downs. A lot of the roadways that they've constructed have to be straight because of whatever I don't understand, but they're straight, so that promotes excessive speeds. Judge. And so they they're building in some of these speed bumps in different ways to slow things down. Okay, Robin, did you have a question? Or um, I just I just wanted to say that I did not get all of that about the race. Yeah, and I, I don't worry about it. I just don't want it. It's, it's pretty long. I tried to get a lot of what the, you know, what the comments were. So yeah, just the decision making is the most important thing to capture. Um, sure. Anybody who wants to know the detail can watch. This meeting it's recorded. Yeah. I think the next time the next time we meet with the select board. Yeah. I like the term uh hybrid as far as yeah. um uh, incorporating not only the form-based code but the usability codes that are not so uh, uh not form-based. Because obviously all the all the recode work that's done now, I mean you can't well this all of it is not form based. Right. We may we may have emphasized too much. I don't know, uh, but I like that hybrid. Yeah, and I think that's more reality. It's more flexibility, which yeah. Andy would refer to. Yeah, it's more realistic. So I would suggest we use that term hybrid uh, code, form based yeah. code. And and the place of design standards is another whole thing. You know, we've talked about that. Yes, and how that's actually not a separate element. Mm -hmm. Anything further, Julie, before we move I, on? Everybody covered what I would have said. Um, <laughs> it was, I was really impressed with all the different types of housing. Um, I think that's definitely something yeah. that we should look to emulate here if we can. Um, just really, really cool. And the excitement of having um, be able to build a new mm -hmm. town center from scratch. That just blows my mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Susan, before you leave, um, yeah. it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I wonder if it really will become a center of the town. I mean, the town doesn't really, it has the strip along Route 1, but it doesn't have a sense of center, except where the schools are. That's one of the things that they mentioned, is the fact that the Downs was, in fact, geographically centrally located, right. sort of contributes yeah. to yeah. creating this. Yes. The, yeah. the only other comment I would make is that, or question is, were there any brownfield sites? Did they have to mitigate any anything? I don't there? think so. I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, maybe it was just manure, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's not fertilizer. Good. Fertilizer. Fertilizer. Okay. Susan, uh, before I leave, and I have to leave in a couple minutes, I just want to let yeah. you know that TDI is meeting. Uh, our next board meeting is this Wednesday, so I, there's not much of an update because I don't think we've had one a meeting since we last talked. But we do have one with a pretty robust agenda for this Wednesday. And it will be great maybe next month that will be on the agenda. The hope, Andy, is that there'll be some yep. sense of what's happening with the uh, the survey. Yeah, yeah, the survey is complete. It's just we had some feedback, Kurt and I did, because I'm a professional surveyor and Kurt's an engineer. Um, so we had some feedback to the surveyors that we want to make sure they add. They, they missed a few things, nothing major, but um, it just will look clearer when they add these to the drawings. So 
we'll be talking about those on Wednesday, and then uh, we should be able to roll those out to the public. Great. And in the meantime, the Topsom Fair Mall has it, or Topsom has its first roundabout. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope yeah, everybody yeah. had a chance to drive that roundabout. It was very. I have, and I had a car in front of me, and it stopped. And I knew that I, I it was probably an older um, resident, and they hadn't seen one for maybe ever. Yeah. And they just yeah. stopped, and you could tell they did not know what did to do. What to do. <laughs> yeah. And they actually did a little U turn and went out the other way. <laughs> They, they didn't even go around the circle. They just did a little. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> it's still like when you, you know, when you go through the toll for the first time where you don't stop for the toll and it says to you, do not stop. You know, it's like people probably need a little help for the first few times. So, yeah. 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 True. Okay. Happy holidays okay. to everybody. Although yeah. I think I'll see you at a workshop Thanks before. Yeah. On Bye -bye. to our next item. Um, which is office, no, it's property owners. Ah, so it was a situation where there were more pro more of us than them. <laughs> um, but I always liked hanging out with us. So I, you know, I had no problem with that. It was, it was quite a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, my point of view about the December 2nd property owners open house was that, you know, the good thing is that even though we had a small turnout of people, they really did pay attention to the visuals. Um, they, every one of them had multiple conversations with members of the committee. Um, and what it means to me is, you know, it's like people got two rounds of postcards. They are definitely aware that something is happening with regard to their property. And so that's a, that's a useful thing. It's a piece of information that's going by all of those. Now, do you happen to remember how many postcards were sent? I would like oh, to I actually have it up. Yeah. So let me know yeah. afterwards. Yeah. I want to, you know, just have that sense. I know you said it's over 100, mm -hmm. but how much over is a big question. So, and it, you know, I think it gave us on the committee kind of a sense of what an open house is going to feel like. You know, um, we'll have updated visuals by then, but, uh, you know, it, it was sort of our first run through. <laughs> Any other thoughts about the? It's one of those things that as a committee we need to do. And um, it's always, it's always frustrating when you don't get uh, more input from the general public. Um, so if you, you know where you stand with your process. Um, the thing, the thing that always worries me is, uh, are, you know, are there people out there who aren't paying attention that are going to show up uh, when it comes to a vote uh, and just say no because they don't understand it? Uh, and I don't know how how we can address that. That is the big question, and I think all we can do is our best effort yeah. to get the word out. And I think a, a lot of it, you know, will rely on word of mouth, you know, as people hear about it and talk to their own little networks. Um, and we, this is something that we will talk through a little bit more on the, what's the date? September? No. We're in December, aren't we? <laughs> yes. Um, so the 19th, on the 19th, we can talk through what some of the upcoming, you know, um, efforts will be to get the word out. Well, one thing I mentioned that I thought was important was we did have a representative of the uh, development community. There. That's right. Uh, That's right. Mm -hmm. And this was somebody who had been part of the October 2021 rollout of Recode, the project directions memo, where, you know, Leslie and Kirk came to talk some for the first time. And we had a, an evening session in the library, but we had a daytime session uh, of, uh, you know, developers and former select board planning board members. Um, it was a well attended uh, two part thing. And then uh, the two consultants toured mm -hmm. Topsom. 
So, and this particular developer had not been part of things in, since then, since October, 2021. And he is plugged back in. And in talking with, I said, so what do you think? He said, it fits right in with our vision. And he said, you know, there are people who approach development differently. And what was the word he used? He said, we, we look to create destination projects. Um, and basically those are projects that inspire. Um, and they own some important property um, in the lower village. So I was pleased to hear that. Um, and we hopefully we will let them know at each stage along the way if they would like to have a deeper dive um, into what's going on. So I just have a comment about that. Um, so I, I feel like we could probably use social media a bit to get the word out like for future well, things yeah. and I'm happy to help with that if there is I think you said there was a social media a Facebook page or something like that so yeah, yeah. I'm happy to like make posts on my using my personal <laughs> Facebook well, or like I'm sending you a virtual hug so just to let you know where we stand with that um there had been during the update process um a facebook page was created it was called plan your top song and then as the update pro as as the implementation process got underway and we were working on recode and we realized that this was a slow slog and public education and you know media expertise could come in handy. That page was updated from plan your Topsum to vision, Topsum your vision in action. So so it's a it's a new page. It can be further updated. It shows that the previous the two planning directors ago is the administrator. But if you look that up, either plan your top sum or your your vision in action, vision in action. Um, so we can talk more about that because what we need to figure out is how do we get to be the administrator on that page and start creating posts. I think there's a lot we could add there. We could put a link to the article in the prior. Um, there's we could put links to stuff on on the town website so that it would people who are mostly focused on um, social media who maybe don't use the town website a lot could find easy links. Who knows? But thank you for that. That is exactly what we need at this stage. Um, yes, thank you. And, and easy links to things on the town website would be handy. Would be handy because right. the town website does not have easy links. Not always easy to navigate. But not easy to navigate. No. Yes. <laughs> to find things. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you for raising that. Um, anything else before we move on? We have a few other bullets here. Let's see how we're doing for time. So office hours, it looks like we are what my vision is, and we'll see if the community if the committee confer concurs is that we are kind of in tune to have one more set of office hours. Um, the hope is after the holidays in January, this will take place. We have no date for that yet. It could be um, it could be on an expanded time basis for our monthly workshop because um, the January, I don't know what the third Tuesday is in January, but um, that third Tuesday could be the workshop or we could find another date. So that's that's the thing at the moment. I think just stay tuned. We're, we're talking to a couple of people who have um, you know, been integral to the feedback process that has been so helpful so far. Um, we want to have the uh, the updates in place before we do the one. The one that was was no, no, she was, yeah. she's going to do those all, all first. And my 
sense and is that we are looking to have those updates done by about the end of February. Is that what we're kind of to get the new draft? The new draft. We were hoping to have the new draft by the end April. of April. Uh, okay. The end of April. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and, but that also allows time for the update, the cleanup and update process. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> so we're not necessarily saying that we're limiting it to one more, but that's what, yeah, that's what we're envisioning right now. Yeah. Partly because looking at the other things that we'll need to do is an, another workshop for the select board, another workshop, I'm assuming, for the planning board on tops and center recode. I'm just feeling like one more, the, the for example, the planning board workshop on tops and center recode was very helpful. It was not super well attended by planning board members. It was not. It, and, and I'm a little concerned that we that had folks have, and we did, we had technical <laughs> difficulties. We couldn't get the owl to cooperate. Yeah. Leslie was listening on my phone. <laughs> That's a challenging situation. So yeah, right. Right. So we're going to have another round of actual workshops, select board and planning board. All of those things will take some time to play out. Um, your, your third Tuesday in January, by the way, is the 16th. Thank you. I'm sorry, I missed. Could you repeat it, uh, if the those planning board meetings and uh, our other stakeholder meetings, is that after this first, the second draft comes out? No, no, those are before. Those are before. Be, partly because, you know, we have two new members of the select board. You were at the select board workshop. There was some feedback there. Um, and I'm hoping that we will have another select board workshop where the new members of the select board will have an opportunity to weigh in and really sort of give us some feedback before the revisions on this draft get completed. I mean, Leslie has a lot of revisions to make, but she wants to make them all in one set. Um, she doesn't want to have several different updates. Okay. So then we would have a second draft that would go through that same round? No, the set, the next draft will go to the public the, the public open houses okay. to town residents as a whole. Um, it might there might be more than I mean I'm assuming that there would be few. I think we can go into this in a little more detail on at the workshop on the our third Tuesday. So are you able to come, Margaret? That would be great if you can. Yeah, the nineteenth. Yeah. 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 Great. Great. Okay. So that takes care of both the office hours and the select board update on, only to repeat what I've already said, which is we're going to give them an update at their meeting on December 21st. And I'm about halfway through writing that now. I will try to get that to everybody tomorrow. And um, knowing how quick all of you are at getting your feedback, I'll, I'll do it as a Google Doc. So any changes or suggestions, you can make it right on the document. Okay. Um, staff review team is an item here. I, do we have one scheduled? They don't have any update there. Um, we did have a staff review meeting, but I had some. Can you guys hear okay? Yep. Yeah, for them. Okay. <laughs> I had some other things um, going on and I wasn't able to, to do anything with that this okay. last day. So um, the next one. There, okay. should be another one. there should be another one soon. That's for the minute. <laughs> no update yet. Yeah, great. Okay. And then the code cleanup update process. I know it's been sort of chugging along slowly. Um, and 
we have a workshop this Thursday um, to review the subdivision ordinance. And I'll be meeting with the planning board chair tomorrow to talk about scheduling some future workshops. Great. Okay. That's quick. Um, we have an item here which was very um, thoughtful when we put it in milestones and time frame for this phase. But I don't think I'm not in a position to be intelligent <laughs> about this bullet at the moment. If anyone else can, Rick, chime in. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think <clears throat> what I was going to say is that, you know, basically we need to wrap up this phase to get a clean draft that can be um, distributed to the public for comment and feedback. And I think the the goal there, or the you know, the real driver is the code cleanup. There's several workshops that need to take place, getting the um, developer feedback um, from the last office hours incorporated, and then getting that draft compiled by the consultants so that it can be released to the public and you know ideally it i think we were kind of like talking about um having that ready before the may town meeting basically just to have that kind of be the kickoff to the public comment the most um visibility from public who are going to show up at the town meeting so that's something i think we need to talk about at the next workshop is okay if we're shooting for a may rollout can we get done what needs to get done between now and then right that's right and i think just to be completely clear we're talking about the rollout not for any decision because it won't be on the May 2024 warrant. It will simply be information about what's ahead for people who do turn out to town meeting so that they can actually maybe pick up some information, um, look at some visuals, stop and chat with us before we go in and vote on the warrant next May. But that would be sort of a wonderful symbolic kickoff of this is what's ahead. Any thoughts about that? Sound good? It does. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll get into the granular details more. And then aim for May 2025. We'll we'll what? talk about that next. <laughs> <laughs> and Larry, I know you know work schedules and other schedules interfere, but you are very welcome, as is the public, to come to our third Tuesday workshop for an hour. It's always a, a quick hour. Um, and and to be part of that. Um, so we're working, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and zoning in, you know, zooming in. Is a, is a or driving. Either one. So. <laughs> okay. Constabulary does not appreciate me, me on Zoom call while I'm driving. <laughs> Who doesn't? The constabulary. Oh, yeah. right. No, that's true. They do not. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think the only other stuff is our standing agenda item of um, liaison updates. Um, I've done mine in terms of reaching out to um, the, the connections to the select board that we are on their agenda. Um, and I am hoping to talk to the town manager and assistant town manager, you know, ahead of that, um, to, to see how things are going from their point of view. Anyone else have? Yeah, Robin. Uh, so I met with um, Susan Priest last week, Thursday, and um, she and I had a really good conversation. She will be retiring this coming, she said July. July. Yeah, so, uh, but um, she had, she was really on top of her game. Um, <laughs> she had, had printed out all the bullet points on the matrix that, um, uh, pertain to the library. Um, they have ongoing um, space and funding issues. They really would like to expand. They need more space for children's programming and teen programming. And um, 
you know, they've worked really hard to partner, partner with various groups in the community, including TDI. Um, and they, you know, it, it's all tied to funding. And they've, as Susan has done a lot of grant writing over the years, they've raised private money, monies, as well as got, gotten increases from the town. Uh, but um, along with, you know, the bigger conversation that's happening around the community center, um, you know, the town has need to grow and we're not sure when and how that's going to look. Um, but they they have done some really cool things. They now have uh, EV chargers in the Tucson library parking lot, which I wasn't aware of. Um, and new LED parking lights that are energy efficient and retrofit of interior lighting. Um, and so they've done a lot of, you know, upgrades for environmental efficiency. Great. Yeah. And uh, they've hosted uh, various uh, career centers uh, through the um, chamber and the library board, I guess. You know, they've really tried to be a community center uh, for education as well as, you know, promoting free and open use of library resources. So um, she's very excited about what the next director is going to have for their vision. And which she's not really, you know, taking on anything new right now, but it's. Um, it's a really interesting time, and it'll be exciting to see who steps into those shoes and, and where the library goes. I mean, they have been a, a sort of a, a main sort of focus or locus for the social connection in town. And I think she's she and the staff have always um, emphasized that. You know, they've gone above and beyond to make sure that every constituency that you can imagine in Topsom is welcome and, you know, served. Um, She's been a very, I think, a very dynamic leader yes. in that direction for the community. Yes, so thank you for that update, Robin. That's great. Um, and I, you know, personally, I'm very sad that she's retired, but um, I, I'm also excited for her because I have loved my own retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we'll see what's ahead for her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Amazing, amazing how far the library has come from the whole house. Oh, the Witten side, house, yeah. On, on the side road. Yes, <laughs> yes. And some have been, like you, around to see the changes, right? Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. So, any other updates? I know um, Andy gave us a quick one, you know, in terms of where. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I'm, uh, I'm very eager to hear what's going on with the Conservation Commission. Um, I know they have a new member. Um, a couple of other committees have new members. So maybe we'll see you here from Angela in the future. Okay, I think that's it. Any other things to raise before we adjourn? One, one quick one. Yeah. Um, you had mentioned the possibility of meeting with the new uh, select board members yeah. uh, because they are obviously coming in very cold. Right. Um, is that still on the table? Well, I'm going to give them an update on the 21st. Mm -hmm. That will sort of, I hope, set the stage for the, the request that I will make in conversation ahead of time with the town manager. Um, I, you know, we talked about this a little bit. It was in the notes of the November meeting that we just approved, but only a one liner. Mm -hmm. It was really to say, you know, given that there are two brand new um, select board members, would it be at this point, you know, three plus years in, would it be a good idea to have a select board workshop on the 2019 plan. Um, obviously, a major piece of that would be recode, but really to give a full sense of context on how other of the how some of the nine big ideas, five of which relate directly to recode, but some of the others how they are moving along. I mean, some of some of the um, entities responsible for carrying out items in the strategy matrix are way ahead of what's spelled out in the strategy matrix. In other areas, the work is slower. So it might be a very good idea to have that full picture um, 
presented to the select board and not to have us as the only presenters, to have some of the other lead entities come and be part of that. So that's a thought. And that, that was sort of mentioned in passing um, last month, but how does that sound? Because I've had side conversations as we've gone to the parking lot with a couple of people and um, it seems to be a well-received idea. Does it, I see some nods on the screen. Yeah, I love that idea. I think it's so, I mean, it's the foundation of what we're doing right now. So it makes sense. Great. Great. That sound okay to you, Robin? Is that, oh, and, and I know people have such a um, a busy schedule, but I think I think sometimes you know the way I've experienced learning things is that you get to a certain point and it's it's helpful to double back and start over and then pick up the things that I missed along the way. There's a lot in the comprehensive plan um, that you know it would be helpful, I think, to remind some of us who are familiar and then to present it anew to folks who are new in town or new to the select board, new to the planning board. I think the planning board has a member or two who's new-ish. One. One, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not new to town. Right. And actually not new to the planning board. <laughs> Coming back on the planning board? Coming back on the planning board. It was on the planning. Member. Yeah, quite a few years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Good. Yeah. All good. So. And I would hope that if somebody's on the select board, that they might have some knowledge of what's going on in town. You would hope. Yeah. You would hope. You would, you would hope. <laughs> that there's a lot. We can just hope for somebody that. <laughs> but we don't know. I mean, and they, we don't know. And it, and I think it is, we're the only group that has that task of making sure this kind of land goes forward and gets implemented to the best of our ability. So just that little check-in reminder, it's already four years out, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. So it sounds like there's broad agreement that this is a good idea. Yeah, and I, I'm not, let me just have a peek here at some notes made, but we can talk more about this in uh, at the workshop on the 19th. Um, yeah, yeah, let's talk more about it on the 19th and how this stuff plays out. <laughs> that would be two days before my update to the select board. Okay, yeah, great. So with that, we're adjourned, yes? It is, it is now 5.39. I love adjourning early. Is this great? <laughs> we've, we've had some late nights. Okay, thanks everybody. Bye. Because Andy left early. Yep. <laughs>